How much time do you want for your progress? progress, progress. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Clatter Chatter on Things That Matter, the podcast that is intellectually engaging, theologically reflecting, encouraging sociologically, imagining ways in which we can live. Thank you for spending this short amount of time with us. We promise you that you will not regret a moment of it. Shout out to Trevor Smith and V.J. Herbert for commissioning this fantastic music to get our minds going on things eternal, positive, and fulfilling life's purposes. All right, all right, all right. Today is September 22nd, 2022. How are you doing, Dr. Hayes? Doing reasonably well, Dr. Cooper. It's great to be here with you on such a wonderful day with a new horizon to the new things that God might be doing. All right, well... Let's let's have this conversation today since it's been a minute. Uh, this is something that I heard this morning on ABC uh, Good Morning America. The silent depression. To what many are calling the silent depression. This is a hashtag that went viral on TikTok with people sharing their financial struggles as they cope with the effects of inflation. My millennial families, especially the ones with kids, are you okay? Are you okay? When mom of five and pre-K teacher Cassie Alice went on a self-described TikTok rant about the rising cost of living, more than three million people tuned in. Bear with me on this one. Um, we're drowning. We're drowning. And the comment section lit up with over 30,000 people, many who could relate. I never thought so many people were going to be under it. Like, oh, I can relate. Oh, we're going through the same thing. We're burying ourselves in debt, you know, credit cards, personal loans, whatever, to make it. And Cassie isn't alone. The hashtag silent depression has gone viral with people likening their financial situation to the Great Depression, including realtor and mom, Shauna Meadows. Do you see that? $60.64. Do you see that? It's been outrageous, like um, from the gas prices to the clothing to just everyday, you know, need toilet paper. Everything has gone up exponentially. While the overall economy is nowhere near the dire straits of the actual Great Depression, when unemployment soared to 25 percent, many Americans are feeling the strain of inflation. Credit card debt is at a record high, above $1 trillion. Interest rates are surging. And the average American household is spending $234 more on the same goods and services every month as they were a year ago. There's no denying that our economic times are difficult for many Americans, particularly if you are a family. But we are going through the right motions to get our country back to about 2% annual inflation. And so... There has to be this leveling out. It takes time. All right, Dr. Hayes. So that's where I want to have this conversation. 90 years ago, we were in the throes of the Great Depression in the 1930s. So that article, the story from May of 1933 to here we are, September of 2023, 90 years ago. And um, the economy we've gotten, we have... Since last we had the conversation, the United Auto Workers are on strike, and I just read somewhere that 38 cities are joining in on the United Auto Workers strike. We're still having the Writers Guild strike and the Directors strike. All of these people are wanting not minimum wage, but equity. And I always say this in my class when we talk about uh, economic disparities in my race relations class and and the um, uh, uh, the the wealth gap. I always say that if we could eliminate um, the economic disparity, if folks were actually had the purchasing power equivalent to the earning power. So for every one dollar a white man earns, white women earns about eighty cents. 
uh, black men earn about 75 cents. Black women earn about 60 cents. Your Latinx, Latino uh, population, they earn about 55 cents. Do you understand? So if I go to a car dealer and I'm saying I can only pay 60% of the charge of this vehicle, or if I go to a department store and say my earning power is only 60 cents on a dollar, I think that would eliminate in a capitalistic context some of the disparities. But when we think about... Who determined a minimum wage when a nation says this is all that you need to live on, a family of four, $7 an hour? Dr. Hayes, that is highway robbery, a minimum wage when you can't even get a gallon of gas. If you pay, if you got a minimum wage and a gallon of gas costs $4 and you only make it seven an hour, you can barely fill up your gas car with your minimum wage if gas is over four dollars and i'm early only earning seven dollars we could do the math it makes no sense food prices exponentially medicine just for people to have the medicine that they need to live like spareva or simbacort that's asthma medicine those things cost a thousand dollars a month for people who needed to breathe. I'm not talking about folks with COPD. You know, I'm talking about people who have asthma because they were born with lungs that didn't fully develop or they had some sort of lung issue as kids. This time of the year is really bad for those of us who suffer from hay fever and defoliation of cotton where I came from, where the toxins from the cotton fields fill the air and, and restricts the lungs from filling up to capacity. Now you add a COVID that impacts the lungs and, and maintenance drugs like Simbacort and Spareva. Why can't the pharmaceutical, I don't want to get all in my feelings about this, but even maintenance, life-saving diabetes medication. Let me, let me. Go ahead, Dr. Hayes. Comment on that. Um, I I think that we're going to have to, as a country, look at a different kind of regulation. And the regulation needs to take a look at profits and wages. I think there ought to be a, a correlation between profits and wages. And we ought to start talking about just wages, not, not equity, uh, uh, not cost of living, none of that. But the workers in any endeavor ought to be paid a percentage of the profits made by that country. That would be revolutionary. If if there was regulation that said if you if you make a billion dollars, then what twenty five percent of what the company makes ought to go to fair wages, just wages, uh, that the workers ought to get a certain percentage of whatever profit that company makes because after all they're the ones they're the ones that really do the work. So that that ex- all of this happen because right now we're suffering with a whole lot of greed Mm -hmm. and the price increases are not due to supply and demand they're due to greed that they saw an opportunity to raise prices and as long as people will pay the prices they'll continue to charge those prices and then inflate them even more it's a shame that a new car costs as much as the house that my mother and father bought my new vehicle in 2023 probably cost twice as much as the home my parents got in the 1970s. That's because they have stopped producing. Therefore, the few cars that are out there are way out of line in terms of the price you have to pay for them because they don't have cars sitting on lots like they used to, where you could go out and pick your color and pick pick the uh, amenities that you want. Um you have to actually order your car 
mm-hmm. three, four, six months in advance. And so the dealers are trying to get top money off of selling that one car. Because it affects their bottom line because Absolutely. the top, the CEOs are the ones who are winning. The dealers are not. Absolutely. They're scrambling to, just to make inventory. And then you have the cogs on the wheel, the employees that are just trying to make it. I mean, they are putting their whole selves for us to drive a vehicle, to lift a 2000 pound engine, to put it in a car and, and only make it $15 an hour. Or thirty dollars an hour. It's not yes. enough when a car costs eighty thousand. Do you hear what and, I'm saying? Yeah, and since since you don't have people um with the kind of ethic, I guess I could put it that way, that would demand that they share the profits in the company, then you're gonna have to put some laws in place. That's all there is to it. Uh you can't depend on these business owners to have a a, a fair-minded sense of compassion upon their workers. They want to eke out every inch of sweat and blood that they can and then pay their workers minimum. Minimum. So I think they ought to be charged with, with paying a fair wage, a just wage, for the amount of work that's being done and the amount of money that is being accumulated. Now, they may never do it, but that would be, to me, the right way to make sure that uh, justice is done. It's really, um, it's a sad, sad um, state of affairs uh, in this country where um we're essentially killing the backbone, which has been the middle class um, of this nation, and nobody seems to care. We're caught up in this geopolitical system of ignorance while everybody else is just trying to make it do what it do, and nobody seems to care. And it is this, I keep going back to, this taxation without representation, that that this is not a democracy, and it hasn't been for a long time. And I, I, I shudder at the fact that there are people who say such vile things about folks trying to come to this nation, and ain't even the nation, nation anyway. When I think about Canada, whose borders have always been open, this is North America, right? Canada, whose borders have been open, especially opening arms to those who flee from apartheid to come to a place of, I, I was in, I was marveling at Toronto and how beautiful and multicultural Toronto is. It just blew me away. I, I saw everybody and everything in this city. It was amazing. And then I think about seeing the, the, the borders in the Southwest. I hope that I, I want to cuss so bad, Dr. Hayes. But I hope they tear up those damn wires and just come to this place and just take it over because this is what the pilgrims did when they, with their damn manifest destiny and hurt the native people. This ain't your land. This ain't my land from California to the New York Islands for the Redwood Forest. They don't want that history to be revealed that they living in stolen country. This this land was stolen. I don't care what they've done or achieved since. They, they ain't achieved shit, but had a- enslaved Africans build this economy. They ain't done a damn thing, but brought their poor asses from Europe. That's the only people who came on the Mayflower. Let's tell the truth. They were poor, then, ratchet yeah. souls who were and socialized. They wouldn't, they wouldn't have been able to, to, to build Make what it. has been built without the labor, sweat, and tears of African people. That's because it. They could not take the sun. I say that all the time. Pope, Pope, Pope Nicholas the fifth sanctioned slavery of, 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 for the Portuguese to go to Africa and get the West Africans in 1493. That was just a few months after Christopher Columbus thought he was in India selling the ocean blue, but he ended up in a place that he thought was India, but it wasn't. And, and here we have a few months later, a few years later, then we get the Mayflower coming over here on Plymouth Rock. 
And these poor ratchet asses from Europe were fleeing from the king of England, from the monarchy. They were the, they were the indentured servant, but they were socialized with this hierarchical structure. They were the, they were the raggediest of the raggedy, the peasants. And they came over here trying to model the aristocracy of the British to subjugate humans and and won't even tell the damn truth, Dr. Hayes. They have such, these people who are a few generations who homesteaded in this nation, in their DNA is raggedy. But in the DNA of the enslaved Africans are royalty. That's why we have this resilience and this forgiveness because this has been, this not the trauma, this is the dignity and the hierarchy that we bring as kings and queens to a place that hasn't been welcoming. And that's why you see playing out now the generations of those who were slavers. Their little great, 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 great grandkids can't handle stuff, so they get guns, and that's why they have this love affair with guns, because they don't know how to take care of nothing. They can't even take care of themselves, so they want to just kill up and send away People of color, but Lord, that day is coming. I believe it. The wicked will cease from troubling and the weary will be at rest. We know how to make it work, Dr. Hayes, even if we got to eat squirrels. I don't want to eat no squirrels, but I hate some squirrels with gravy, just like I've eaten, e- eaten rabbits, but I don't want to go back there. But I tell you what, we can take care of each other. We know how to take care of ourselves. We know how to survive. We survived the middle passages. That's, that's really all we ever asked for. We didn't necessarily want to be integrated with them. No. We just wanted to have our own and be left alone. Just leave us the Since hell alone. Here, you know, we know how to do things. We know how to take care of ourselves. Making tea cakes and cornbread and bringing over macaroni and cheese from France to feed Thomas Jefferson's ass. And now they eat macaroni and cheese like they invented it. No, that was somebody black that did macaroni and your cheese, okay? All of the things that we do. We have made it work and we're going to keep making it work because that is our superpower. And I tell you, Dr. Cooper, I really don't think that uh, African Americans are going to allow themselves to be taken back. We know too much. We've been through too much. And we understand our role in this country. And it is not subservience. It is leadership. And so I, I believe that our people will allow that resilience to spring forth and cause us as a people to bind together and to show this country what good living is all about. And on that note, Dr. Hayes, we got to keep being part of that good and keep living like sons and daughters, heirs of salvation From the most high God, the God who owns the cattle on a thousand hills, the one who let the ravens feed a prophet, the one from nothing created. That is the essence of being created in the image of God from nothing. Amen. As co-creators. Thank you, Dr. Hayes. It has been a privilege, a pleasure, and an honor. To have you join in with us today. Remember that everything will be all right until we meet again. Stay safe and well.